Boom, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is weekly devotional number 57, I believe. And I'm looking forward to it, excited to see what the Lord has in store for us. And we're just gonna jump right in. And we wanna go ahead and turn over to the book of Psalms, chapter number 78. The first eight number, the first eight verses is where we're gonna be this evening. Psalm 78, verses one through eight. And while you're turning there, just a couple things by way of housekeeping. As y'all know, every week, I do like to mention this though pretty often that prayer requests are still the first link down in the description below. You can anonymously fill out that form, a burden, anything that's weighing heavy on your heart, and those will be prayed for by myself. So you can do that. And then also as well, would like to make mention just kind of a channel update um, that obviously we'll have our devotionals every Sunday night. For the next couple weeks will probably be two vlogs and a devotional instead of just a vlog and a devotional. So we're probably looking at about three videos a week. The next couple weeks have a lot of content to be putting out. Two videos from Arise, a video a couple weekends ago, me and some buddies from Gardner Webb reunited. Um, myself and Bradley are two young preachers on the road to break 90 series. That'll be continuing a couple episodes of that. And so just different things. So just be on the lookout for that. A lot of videos coming out um, soon. So don't want to miss any of those. But anywho, enough of uh, housekeeping, enough introductions. Psalm 78, verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he hath established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart all right and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. So what we find here and what you've seen kind of based on the thought and the title of this week's video, this text is geared towards the youth. I think you see this preached a lot of times at youth meetings. You hear this text brought up a lot and for good reason. And that is kind of the center point of our um devotional this evening is the youth and is this next generation of people because this text and this kind of burden has been on my heart especially this past week being at the Arise Youth Conference and seeing and witnessing all the things that I was able to see and that I was able to witness and in this text I think we find very clearly this evening that yes that we still have hope but it's not necessarily as simple as that I do want to kind of flesh this out for a moment, if you'd allow me to, and I'm going to kind of go backwards through our text this evening. I'm going to start down in verse number eight and work my way back up to the earlier verses of this psalm. And I just want to see a couple things, kind of want to hit a couple points um, through our text. So look down at verse number eight. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart all right and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. And so before even we can even start to talk about this hope and get to the hope, we have to look kind of the context in which this psalm was penned, that the children of Israel, when they're receiving this psalm, their previous fathers and the, those that they had previously been under influence of had not been very good examples of the Lord and had not kept the faith very well. They had been very rebellious they had not been very obedient, and that's kind of described, I believe, in Deuteronomy and in Judges, some passages like that, talking about their stubbornness, talking about their desire to worship several little G gods, um, and just refuse to turn from their own ways. They refuse to deny themselves, if we're going to use some New Testament language. They, they just simply did not want to do that. They didn't want to follow after God and the, the plan that he had for them. And so the psalmist here is using the previous generations kind of as an example to the children of Israel then to not be like them, to kind of turn away from sins of old and of lifestyles and of kind of the way the culture was 
and to pursue monotheistically after God and not pursue after many beings and other deities. And the same can kind of be said for us as believers tonight that, you know, over the last 50 to 100 years, America as a whole has been on a downward trajectory as it's concerned with the things of Christ. I think it'd be ignorant of me to make the claim and to say that over the last 100 years or so, that America has only gotten more on fire for Jesus and that now America is in a place where the majority of the country are actual professing and fruitful Christians that live for the Lord every single day. Unfortunately, that's not the world in which we live in. There's so much sin and so much destruction. And so we can't follow after the generations and the precedents that have been set before us. There has to be a new generation, a generation of young, that rises up together that says, you know, we don't want to follow the example that our fathers have set, but rather we want to set a new precedent and a new example and change the trajectory in which our country is going in. And so that's kind of the first little point here. You don't want to follow after what generations of old have set, but also look on the made of verse number five and six. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children that the generation might come to know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. So the idea here is kind of simple. What the psalmist is kind of hashing out is that regardless of what's your age, regardless of where you're at in the walk of life, there is a very key responsibility that we have, regardless of how young or how old of a person that you are, regardless of where you're at on that spectrum, if you're in your earlier years of life or if in your, your latter years, we all have a present responsibility um, to live out each and every day. Verse, kind of, verse 6 kind of alludes to this idea that we as believers now should set a precedent and example and be faithful to God now so that our children, the next generation, might arise and come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when our children have children, they will too will rise and go live for Jesus being that beacon of hope and being that salt and being that light. It's a domino effect almost in the faith. It is a precedent you can set regardless of kind of any generational curses that might be on your family, any generational sin that might be going down the line. Wherever you stand today, all through the Lord Jesus Christ and all through his mercies and through his grace and his love, you can kind of change the trajectory of your family history, of your family lineage. You can change the people you come in contact with everywhere you go through the Lord working through you as long as you're faithful and you are able to proclaim the good news of the gospel and all that God has done for you. So yes, the, I believe that a lot of our hope today resides in this next generation as they are the church of today, not the church of tomorrow, but the church of today. Sure, there's a lot of hope that comes from them as the young people, the youth that I'm primarily directing this devotional towards. But if you're not a youth, that doesn't mean that you're not a part of this equation. You still need to set an example for the generation to come. You still need to be that accountability. You still need to raise up um, the next generation in the ways of the Lord so they might be able to do it themselves once you've kind of went on. And that's not to say if you haven't came from a family of Christians, you can't live for the Lord. Don't hear me wrong there. But it does help. I mean, even in 2 Timothy 3, I believe it's verses 14 and 15, Paul tells Timothy to continue thou in the things which thou hast been assured of. So telling Timothy, hey, I know you're young, I know you're kind of inexperienced, but it pays off to remember this book, remember what you've read, remember the encouragement in Scripture, remember the songs that we sing in church, remember the truth that you grew up in as a child, and now go apply it to your life now that you're getting ready to pastor this church at Ephesus. And so for all of us, we have a responsibility this evening that I hope all of us will take seriously. And finally, I want us to look to verse number four, kind of in closing here. The Bible says that we will not hide them from their children, showing the generation to come the praise of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. I think what we find here is a promising generation for the Lord. That yes, there is a lot of sin and there's a lot of destruction and there's a lot of evil and wicked ways that are being permitted and praised especially amongst the young people in this country. The next generation has its issues. Do not get me wrong. We all do, quite frankly, regardless of where you fall out on the spectrum. We all have struggles with sin and things of that matter. But especially in this next generation, there is a lot of evil things that are going on in the youth of today's country, and they're 
They are desperate. They are broken. They are hungry. They're empty. And they're trying to fill that hole inside with something, seemingly everything except for the Lord Jesus Christ. But nevertheless, yes, this generation today needs help, and they need Jesus likely more than ever before. But there is still promise, and there is still a promising generation for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think anybody that I'm speaking to this evening that might have had the opportunity to go to Arise, the youth conference last week up in Pigeon Forge, along with myself, maybe you got to watch the services online, I think you can see that there is still promise and there's still potential. I mean, just say, for example... And this is only based on the numbers they got from the cards. I dare to say that there's there was even more that we could put down on this for record, but with a crowd of 5,300 young people gathered in one place for a church service, it's hard to get all the decisions written down in real time. But from what they gathered, 254 salvations, and I believe there was close to, there was 30 young men that surrendered the call to preach, about another two dozen that surrendered to the call to ministry and missions, and then 55 rededicated their life to Christ. I know this generation's in trouble. I know sin is absolutely plowed through the United States of America and is running a rampage on the world today. But based off those numbers, based off what I've seen, based off of what youth pastors and youth leaders and people in the ministry and other people have seen throughout um, not just this conference, but in the last couple months and weeks and years, I think it is safe for me to say in this office tonight that there is still a promising generation for the Lord, that God has not gone out of business yet. The kingdom of God has not shut its doors. We are not finished. We are not closed up. But that rather God is still on the move. He's still working. He's still saving. He's still delivering people from bondage, loosing people from their chains, bringing prodigals back home, allowing souls to rededicate their lives back to him, calling people in the ministry to serve him and to love him full time. God is still doing all of those things. He's still very much so alive. He's still very much so well and on the throne. And this next generation to come has so much promise and potential. But we still need young people. And we still need people around those young people to rally together, locking shields and making the commitment to unite together and to go make a difference for the cause of Christ. Not caring what other people say, not caring what other people think, but simply lock, stock, and barrel sold out for the cause of Christ because it pays to be a Christian and it pays to live for Jesus in 2024. Stand up for Jesus and he'll stand up for you. That's kind of all I have today by way of burden. It's really been on my heart the last week or so, so I hope that was an encouragement to you. I hope it touched your heart as much as it's touched mine. We're going to close the devotional this evening and dismiss with a time of prayer and that'll be all for us. So let's pray. Holy Father, Lord Jesus, God, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your word. God, the encouragement that we find, Lord, this evening, God, just with the reality that you are not done yet, that, God, we still have hope, that, God, you are still moving, you're still working in this next generation of people, and that, God, I know this world outside is dark. I know it's gloomy. I know it's filled with sin and filled with things that are not honorable unto you, but, Lord Jesus, there is still hope in the midst of this chaos and in the midst of this sin-ridden world. And God, I pray for every young person that's under the sound of my voice. God, I pray that you'd raise a spirit of courage and boldness up in them like we talked about last week. That God, they'd go into their schools this fall, Lord. They'd be living on fire for you, making a difference. And for all of us, God, maybe we'd go in all of our areas of influence. That God, we'd also too desire to make a difference. We'd be salt. We'd be light. God, that people could see you, Lord, through us in conversations and in um, time spent together. Lord, help us today, God. Give us the strength, the boldness to live and to make a difference for you in these day and hour that we live in. And God, will give you all the praise and the glory. God, we love you. We thank you for everything. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. That is all. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay posted. Stay tuned. We've got a lot of videos coming on this week and in the next couple of weeks. Don't miss any of them. Prayer requests down below. Y'all have a great week. And God bless.